Now let's talk about the hell volard zelinsky reaction. We're going to look at the alpha carbons on a carboxylic acid. And if you recall, we had something, we've looked at reactions where we've brominated or chlorinated these hydrogens. And you may think, oh, we could brominate those as well. And if you recall, the reaction conditions were adding Br2 or Cl2, so elemental bromine, and we'd run this in either acid or base, depending on how many of these we wanted to substitute. And if we tried that, we would get no reaction. And the reason for that is it's not going to be possible to deprotonate these hydrogens when there are more acidic hydrogens sitting right over here. So we're going to deprotonate these hydrogens first, and we won't be able to deprotonate there. And so we'll need a different way of doing this. And so effectively, we kind of go back to the previous video and we convert it into an acid chloride along the way, or an acid bromide, and then continue the reaction, and then we just hydrolyze the acid chloride. So it's a little bit of a roundabout way of doing it. So I'm going to sketch out the actual reaction and the conditions that are used. So here is an example of a carboxylic acid, and there's a couple of ways that we could go about this. We could add, and this will occur in two steps. So first step, we could either add uh, some phosphorus solid um, with some uh, carbon tetrachloride and bromine. So solvent here and some bromine. So this is going to form uh, the other option for a reagent, which is to use bromine, so I'll say or use bromine and PCl3, and this is just going to catalyze the, the reaction here. Um, either one of these conditions will work. I suppose it really just depends on what you have in your um, storeroom. Second step is then to add water. And when we do this, we will make the carboxylic acid with the halide right here, the brominated right there. And so we might ask, well, why does it work in this case and doesn't work in that case? Bromine is fairly reactive. So we're going to go pretty quickly through and we're going to skip quite a few steps on the mechanism um, just to get to things that we might not have seen yet. So the first thing we're going to have is somewhere in in this solution will be PBr3. These conditions will generate PBr3, at least some. And then there's going to be a few steps that uh, will then generate the acid bromide. So just like we talked about in the previous video. So now we no longer have that, oh, there's protons here that could be deprotonated before we have um, something there. And so there's going to be a few more steps and we can form the enol from this. And then we have a double bond right there. So double bonds can react with bromine. We've discussed that before as well. 
So there's the double bonds reacting with the bromine. It's going to generate some bromide. So that will then make this. Oh, that has to move down here as well for that to kind of make this cascade happen. So we've got our bromide that will pick off the hydrogen and that's going to form this intermediate which I suppose we could isolate if we wanted to. Just don't add the water. Uh, next, if we go ahead and add the water to this, uh, we've already discussed the hydrolysis of acid halides. Well, acid chlorides, but bromides are uh, same process. And then we will generate a little bit of HBr and the carboxylic acid comes back. So it's, it's kind of similar. We just kind of protected this almost and made it a little bit more reactive and then remove it later. Now, you may ask, where is this useful in organic synthesis? And in one of the places, uh, it's in making amino acids. So let's just say that we have this bromide here. So right here, we would really like to have a, a nitrogen if we're generating an amino acid. And we've had reactions where we, we make those. And if you add in a really large excess of ammonia, you could probably make a, a fair amount of the mono substituted, especially since that this is a rather, rather bulky um, substrate. But you really do need the excess here in order for that to work. And then you'll, you'll also need an acid workup step. And if you do this right, you can make the amino acid phenylalanine. But uh, it's not without its own problems. I, I suppose there's always the risk of over-alkylating. Um, based on the conditions. That's why we are trying to use a large excess of this. And also, generally speaking, uh, amino acids are chiral, and this is going to generate a racemic mixture. Unless, of course, you can somehow generate the bromide here in an enantiomeric, or, you know, a chiral fashion. And if you're using the hell volard zelensky reaction, then there really isn't any directing group telling it to react on one side of the molecule or the other. And so you're going to end up with a racemic mixture of this. That means you'll have a racemic mixture of the amino acid. So it's not without its own uh, little problems there. But if you would like to alpha brominate or alpha halogenate, a carboxylic acid, then you can use the Hell-Bollard-Zelensky reaction to do so.